What's good, sports fans? My name is Damian Adams from The Real Deal with Damian Adams and the Third and Three Podcast. If you are a fan of podcasts, go subscribe to both The Real Deal with Damian Adams and the Third and Three Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, if you're looking for a podcast outside of sports, some on relationships, you can go ahead and subscribe to my buddy's podcast, The Struggle is Real with Bakari Booten, really dope podcast. In his last episode, he talked about a struggle that I have myself. You know, the fact that we deal with the plight of the sexy chocolate man. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're the sexy chocolate man and they get a taste, they can't handle the fact that they can't have the whole meal. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta deal with the fact that he might be angry with you after that. Now, I don't deal with the issues he deals with. Now, if you wanna hear about the issues he deals with, with his exes and things he's dealt with as far as co-parenting and overall conversations about those type of things, go ahead and subscribe to The Struggle Is Real. It's a really dope podcast that my man hosts. But he also right, believes right. that he knows a little bit about sports. Um, so we're doing a special Real Deal debate. And on this episode, the first episode of The Real Deal debate, I might do this weekly, it might become a thing, we'll see. So for this special episode of The Real Deal debate, we're debating who's the better player, Chris Paul, or Russell Westbrook. Now, Bakari, before we get into it, please tell the people where they can follow you on social media and yeah, yeah. just wherever they need to see your content. Uh, right now, I'm streaming on all uh, podcast platforms. The Struggle is Real with Bakari Booten. You can, it's literally on everything. You can find it on everything, but right in uh, Apple, for one, Spotify, and everywhere else you listen to, to the podcast. Check me out. It's really good, really good content, really honest content. Uh, on social media, on Facebook, you can follow The Struggle is Real. Just go ahead and give it a like. Really good content up there. A lot of stuff that can help people, you know, with kids going through situations. And if you have any of those things, you can always hit me up on The Struggle is Real on the Facebook app. Just hit me up with questions, with experiences. I'm always open to listen to people's experiences. And, you know, if you got some good stuff, then I, I want to get you on the show anyway. So you can always find me on those platforms. Thanks for the shout out, Adams. Oh, no problem at all. And I was on an episode, a few episodes back, you can still go back and listen to that one as well. We had a really good time. It was a really funny episode. And today, when we're not, you know, talking about relationships, most times we're debating sports and we've been debating sports for now, All the time. Uh, going on 11 years now. He, I met him when I was 20 years old. I'm 31 now. So yeah, 11 years, uh, me and him have been going back and forth and he's been wrong the whole time. So, <laughs> <laughs> boy still a hater i don't understand <laughs> so now we're going to talk about this subject but so today our debate is who's the better player chris paul or russell westbrook and bakari Booten believes that it is russell westbrook who is better than chris paul and i believe chris paul is better than russell westbrook and because i am the host i'm gonna be nice and let bakari start why is it that you believe russell westbrook is better than chris paul <clears throat> First, I'm going to say, I don't like the, the issue with your remarks about it, because we've been arguing about this for a while, is that he thinks it's, it's not even close. Like, it's not even up for debate. Like, what are we talking about? It's this huge, like, what? This is Chris Paul. We're talking about point God, like all this. And I, my, my thing is, some people will think Chris Paul is better, and some people will think Westbrook is better. I understand the back and forth. Me, I got Westbrook. And if, if you were to give me the choice, like, yo, who would you rather have? Westbrook? Westbrook's career? or Chris Paul's career, not narrative, because that's different. The narrative have been created, which is shapes the minds of a lot of people out there, including Damien right here, to feel a certain way about Westbrook. Like even he was in the news a little while ago with him and Stephen A. Smith having a little back and forth, which I did not agree with Stephen A. Smith at all. But to me, which career would I rather have? The dude who went the furthest in the playoffs, the dude who will go down in history for something that no one else has ever done, that guy is like, it, it, it's, it's only one guy who, who the dude who has an MVP. So if you were to give me the choice, like if I took the names off both players, if I was just like, yo, this dude don't have a name on, and this dude, player A and player B, this dude has at least won the Western Conference once. This dude has an MVP. This dude will go low down in history as having a major record and done something that nobody else has done and led the league in um, average triple doubles for three straight seasons. Which, which player would you pick? Like, yo, which career would I want? This one or this one? Or this guy who was pretty good on like seven teams. Wow. The exact that's, that's literally all I have to say about Chris Paul. He was really good on seven teams that, that never went anywhere. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't get how it's that hard to like 
think about it. I'll, but I'm only coming with facts. Now, tell me how much you like Chris Paul. Go ahead. Well, the reason I believe Chris Paul is better than Russell Westbrook is everything that goes beyond just the base stats. So when you talk about Russell Westbrook, you talk about the triple doubles, you're going to get you 20, 10, and 10. What are you doing this year? 20, 10, and 10. That's exciting. And the Wizards is like dead last with Chris those Paul. stats. 25, so, 10, and 10, but, you know. Huh? Go ahead. 25, 10, and 10. But. Yes. Amazing. And where are the Wizards? Where are they at? Thank you. It's the Wizards. <laughs> anytime we've had this, we've talked about this. Anytime Chris Paul's the best player on the team, and anytime Russell Westbrook's the better player on the team, who's got the best team? You're mentioning him going to the finals when he had Kevin Durant on his team. He wasn't the best player. He had Kevin Durant, who's going to go down as a top 10 player all time on his team. He had James I'm, Harden, who wasn't who he is now. Baby James Harden? Yeah, but still, the fact that he was sixth man of the year coming off the bench for that squad. James Harden was coming off the bench for that squad. Thanks for making my point. But who was he coming off the bench to? Russell Westbrook. If you're good enough to put James Harden on the bench, I'm sure you could play. James, first of all, <laughs> James Harden was playing shooting guard at the time. Calm down. We all know James Harden on the bench. Better. Russell Westbrook, calm it down. <laughs> so don't don't use it as your point. That's not your, that's not a good point for me. <laughs> so he had a team. The team he made to the finals with was with Kevin Durant as the best player. James Harden as a six man. Serge Ibaka. The drafting that was done by that Thunder team was amazing, and they were a very young team that made it to the finals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We were set, everybody thought for sure this team is going to make it to the finals for the next 10 years. They only like 21, 22 years old, and they made it to the finals. This so, is going to so, be amazing. So Westbrook had a good team? Yes, he had a great he, team. He had a, really, a great, really great team, right? So what happened when Russell Westbrook got hurt? Please tell me. Because there was, was a playoff where Russell Westbrook got hurt. How did that good team, don't change it now, but how did that great team do? Nah, they got eliminated. They got eliminated. Oh, okay. The no, no, they didn't just get eliminated. They, it wasn't like it was a, 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 you know, game seven heartbreaker. They didn't just get eliminated. They got destroyed. Destroyed. It wasn't even close. And they didn't lose to the team that went on to win the finals. Nope. They lost to a regular old Grizzlies team. It got okay. gentlemen sweep. When Chris gentlemen Paul, sweep. when Chris Paul got hurt in game five against the Golden State Warriors, the stacked Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, they were up three two. What happened with James Harden and the rest of that team? You can make the same argument okay. for both guys. No, you cannot. They shot <laughs> 0 for 30 from 3. Like, of course. With Chris Paul, that doesn't happen. If Chris Paul's leading that team, oh they do not go 0 for 30 from the three-point line in game seven. You think his pass is about to – this ain't 2K? He ain't got gold dimer? No, he has not. He does have that. gold dimer. There's a reason he has it on 2K because he has it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't just give it to him for no reason. So, right. And it's not just about his passes. He would have got them out of that. He would have said, yo, we just missed 15 straight threes. Let me get some mid-ranges. Let's get to the rim. Because he's a point guy, right? There's a difference between running your team being a point guard and facilitating the offense, making your team better, and just getting stats. See, if this was the argument of who was the better at running point guard, I'd be like, yeah, Chris Paul, I got that. But we talking about who is the better that's player. What they, that's, what they, that's what they play, point guard. So if you're looking at the, the player – you're looking at their position. That's what their job is, right? And one of the reasons that people think Russell Westbrook is better than Chris Paul is because he averages so many assists, right? That's part of being that, a point that's, guard. That's one reason. That's one reason. And that's one reason, right? I mean, he, when he averages stronger, averages more points, assists, okay. rebounds. Okay. He's a better athlete, right? And that's been your argument for a long time. We used to argue about Darren Williams and Chris Paul. You thought Darren Williams was better than Chris Paul because he was a better athlete. Darren Williams. I don't remember all that. Like, oh, no. You don't remember? You, nah, no, stop lying. You know <laughs> you used to argue down for Darren Williams. But that dude. Better than Chris Paul. It was a year where he was he was up there. It was a year. He was up Bro, there. You don't remember Darren? Darren Williams was a very good player, but he wasn't Chris Paul. Russell Westbrook is a very good player, great player. He's not Chris Paul. Russell, so look at Ru- Bro, I don't want to, what do we got to do? Like, tell me right now, what do Russell Westbrook got to do to get some, some respect around here? I, he's first ballot Hall of Famer. I respect him. First ballot Hall of Famer, he's just not Chris Paul. What he's got to do to be better than Chris Paul? What about play some defense with all the athleticism you got? How about doing that? Dude, don't play defense now. Come on, how, man. How many all defensive teams have Russell Westbrook made? Give it to me. <clears throat> that, what, that don't mean you don't play defense. Zero. There's a lot of great defensive players out there. He's the most athletic point guard of all time. He should be one of the greatest defenders ever, period. There's no excuse for that. 
the only point guard you could say was more athletic than him, maybe, was Derrick Rose pre Rose. That's it. And I don't even think that. Exactly. So Russell Westbrook is the most athletic point guard of all time. And has Chris, never... Chris Paul got the best publicist of all time. Like, that's... It's, I mean, you know it's a popularity contest, and Russell Westbrook's popularity has been low, low since... Kate. He won MVP! Don't... don't you, so his, if he was a great defender, he would make all defense if he won MVP. No, no. Okay. He had that. He, he was going to get that MVP. What he did that year, nothing. You, there's nothing nobody could say. But since then, you know who... All the sports analysts, most people, this dude is the most underrated player I've ever heard spoke on. Like they say, now all of a sudden, triple doubles don't matter no more. You know who, why they say that? Because West, Russell Westbrook. So the reason them. the reason they say that is because Russell Westbrook has made devalued, right? Exactly. Because he gets those 11 assists also getting you five, six turnovers, right? So now those assists aren't as valuable because you also turn the ball over and your assist turnover ratio isn't good. So can so we talk as many points as you're creating for your team? You're doing for the other team with your turnovers. You know who doesn't so, do that? Chris Paul. Chris Paul doesn't do that. I mean, if you take away 13 points off his average, then he have less turnovers too. What you mean? Chris Paul's averaging what? 14 points a game, man. First of all, for the- his career, since you want to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was gonna come with the lies, so let me come with the facts. For Chris Paul's career, he's averaging 18.3 18, okay, points per game per season, 9.4 assists, which is more than Russell Westbrook does for his career. Russell Westbrook has some crazy years, but career-wise, more consistently, it's been Chris Paul. For his career, per game, Chris Paul only averages 2.4 turns per game. What you, how much you think Russell Westbrook does? I mean, probably about three and a half, four. You, uh, you wish. <laughs> you <laughs> wish he was that low. <laughs> Come on, man. But the thing is, how how is that affecting how, when he, we out here going out here getting these triple doubles doing that stuff? People say it's past that, and oh, he just out here doing whatever. But then if you check the win percentage for those triple doubles, dude winning seventy five percent of the games where he gets a triple double. It, it ain't just padded stats. They need it, especially in OKC. They needed every single one of those triple doubles. Seventy five percent of those games ended in wins when he got triple doubles, and when he didn't, most of them was losses. So it ain't just pat statting. And then when you if, if you want to say like okay well in the beginning he wasn't doing that well he had Kevin Durant and James Harden on his team he wasn't finna do that the, before Kevin Durant and James Harden came he was averaging about 20 23 24 points a game after them he averaged 28 29 yeah. so he was, so what that means is he could have been doing this the whole time but of course you got two other all-stars great players on your team you can't do the stuff that you would do without them like that so and if those stats are great. You make a great argument for the triple doubles. I love the win percentage stat. The thing is, when he's doing that, he should be making other players better. Who has what Russell Westbrook elevated when he's playing basketball? When he's doing all these great things for his individual numbers, who has he elevated to make the team better? Well, that's easy. Dabo uh Nick Collison. Elevate them to where? To the playoffs. You saw that squad? No, I'm talking about you make players better. Chris Paul elevated David West to be an all-star. David West without Chris Paul is just another dude. He's a two-time all-star. David well, West is going to be an solid. all-star without Chris Paul. Say it. Say that. Go ahead. Say it. Even when he was old, you don't remember him on Golden State? He was, he was he was contributing. He wasn't out there a bum. Contributing? All-star. There's a big difference bro, there, He was bro. in his prime then. When he got to when he got there, he was In his little... prime. In his prime. Without Chris Paul, David West is an all-star. I mean, I think Chris Paul helped him a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. This is the but same dude who, see, used, who used to say Chris hate, Paul is chubby to try to, to – try to. <laughs> Chris Paul has been chubby, as has been chubby for at least six seasons. He came in just like James Harden at the beginning of this season. Like, Chris, that's Chris and Paul. Chris Paul being chubby has made nine all-defensive teams. Russell Westbrook being the most in shape, most athletic point guard we've ever seen has made no defensive teams. Chris okay. Paul being chubby, being short – has led the league in steals six times. Russell Westbrook, being the most athletic point guard we've ever seen, has never led the league in steals. And you telling me Russell Westbrook is better than Chris Paul? Chris Paul carries the team on offense and on defense. One of the greatest defensive point guards of all time, Russell Westbrook has some records. But both sides of the ball matter. Chris Paul's giving you awesome stats on offense and being one of the greatest defensive players of all time. So How is Russell Westbrook better than that guy? Tell me why this dude keep losing in the playoffs then. Over and over. So, okay, so now wins don't matter. Stats don't matter. Wins do matter. Thank you for bringing up wins. 
every time Chris Paul joins a team, the team elevates. Only only could be one champion. I just mentioned he lost to Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green in the Western Conference Finals. When he was the best player on the Hornets, we lost in seven to Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Mon Ginobili in the second round, our best season. He's running into some juggernauts. Now, is Chris Paul perfect? No, he's had his moments in the playoffs where he wasn't the best. Never said he was perfect. I'm just saying he's better than Russell Westbrook. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. I could give you like 10 reasons why Russell Westbrook didn't win. And if we could for to make a bunch of excuses, I need I need hard data. He's been in the league, what, 13, 14 years? I think 15, actually. I just Tell gave me- you a bunch of hard data. Nine times all defensive, six times leading the league in steals, four times leading the league in assists. What more hard data do you need? I need to know this dude is leading the league in steals. This dude is defense, this, all defense. Why does his team, which he's the best team on, never win playoff games? It seems like he had he had Blake Griffin, he had DeAndre Jordan. Did he have he Blake had, Griffin in the playoffs? Or did Blake the Griffin get hurt every year in the playoffs? That's that's what happened. <laughs> they didn't lose none. They're they just making they never, whenever you make that face. To be like, oh, you're not making the point. I know I'm making a really great point because you ain't got no, nothing back with not, that face. They never lost a, a loaded. They never lost a game where the whole squad was there. They lost a lot of a lot of games where the whole squad was there. They could not get over. It. I'm like, okay, this this. Yeah, Chris I said that. They the hurt. Like they're the one series you really could point to with Chris Paul is when they lost to Houston, and they should have beat Houston. But anytime Chris Paul lost a series, outside of that, his team was not favored to win. So you so can point to on, one series where he his team was favored to win. So he been on what like four or five teams by now. All of these teams just fifteen years just running into teams where they just losing. Come on, man. at some point I got to think about narrative. name a team that Chris Paul was on outside of that Houston series where he was on Clipper on the Clippers. Name a team that he was on that was favored to win the series that they lost. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of like tough. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to look that one up because I know it's a couple in there where I'm like, dang, I thought y'all was about to pull that one because I thought the Clippers had a legit shot at one at a championship. I'm like, yo, I don't know. They they had a legit chance in with Clippers and they lost to Houston. And they had a legit chance in Houston when they lost to Golden State, who Golden State is one of the greatest teams of all time when they added Kevin Durant. Like you can't really fought them for losing to that stacked ass team. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I th- I feel like those teams they could have won that series. I they honestly could've. feel like they could have. Chris that Paul series. got hurt in Game Five, like he messed up his hamstring. I feel like if That's Chris Paul stays healthy, they win that series. You talked about the 0 for 30 from three in Game Seven. That legitly does not happen with Chris Paul on the court because he's such a great general on the floor. Okay, so to me, this this is like what you're saying right now was kind of like one of the things I always like allude to. With, with Westbrook, every you have to like say, okay, well, this don't count. This don't count. This is because it is. Well, this is because it is. So this is because it is. With, with Chris Paul, they're like, well, he got nothing to show for it, but I just think he good. Well, he got nothing to really show for it, but I just... It, with, it, Russell, he, with Russell Westbrook, though, I can name more than one where his team was better or his team was favored to win, right? They were favored to beat Utah when it was him and Paul George going against a very young Donovan Mitchell. Paul George had five points, bro. That was one we, game. We've come to know that Paul George, you know, in the playoffs. Okay, against Portland, Paul George balled out that series. Balled out that series. And Damian he Lillard. Lillard. He let Damian Lillard. Who, who was guarding Damian Lillard? <laughs> 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 who was guarding Damian Lillard right there? Oh, okay, cool. Why, why wasn't Russell Westbrook guarding Damian Lillard? Because he can't play no defense. That's because why. Paul George. What do you mean? It's, it's PG. I mean, he's like, Paul, if you don't go give me five points, can you at least get out there and guard somebody? Like, Paul, if you're going to not show up and shoot 27% from the field. That's the thing, though. Paul George showed up in that series. He showed up in that series. They you know who got dominated? What, what matchup got dominated? Damian Dollar dominated Russell Westbrook. It happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. You're not going to win them all. It, it, was, it was just destined for them to do what they did. I think they made it all the way How to the How many times the in a playoff final? matchup has the point guard matchup dominated Chris Paul? Mm, I'm, oh, I'm gonna look that one up too because I'm sure it's a couple times. Chris Paul just old, man. He, sure yes, he's old. He's older now, and you know what he's doing now? He got the Phoenix Suns, who haven't made the playoffs in ten. I'm glad you years. brought this up. Go ahead. Go, what the Phoenix Suns haven't made the playoffs in ten years? They're the number two seed in the Western Conference. If Russell Westbrook was in Chris Paul's spot on the Phoenix Suns, are they the number two seed? Yes. You saw what they did in the bubble last year. 
You just see what they can talk like, about. You you talking about eight they games on the way up anyway. You talking about eight every games. single what game. What they doing the regular season last year though? Before the bubble, they they were they were on the way. They were ascending. You cannot say with a straight face. You didn't think that the Phoenix. I'm, I was like, okay, they're a young team on the rise. He picked a team that was young and on the rise. I, I on the rise be- from not making the playoffs, being the last team invited to the bubble. So they're the last team invited to the bubble. So that means number 22 out of 30 teams, right? You were thinking this year they might be an eight seed. They're the number two seed. And everybody got hurt. They were number two seed before the, before LeBron even got hurt. Like <clears throat> Murray out, LeBron, AD. Murray just got hurt. Murray just got hurt. They were they were ahead of the different Nuggets. Murray just got hurt like two days ago. Stop. Hey, when they got Aaron Gordon, we thought some things about to change. Then um yeah the, yeah the Mavericks got, fell like off. I said, though, Murray even with the seven game winning streak they went on, they were still behind the Suns. That lets you know how good the Suns were doing. Don't just throw players out there. Just, <laughs> when no, you know Jamal know, Murray I, just got hurt. That's why I hated this. I, I like the Suns, but I hated to see them in second place because I knew what the narrative was about to be. Oh, Chris Paul did this. That's not a that's right. facts though. You can point to every team Chris Paul has been on, and they become better. I feel like Chris Paul go to the team is like, yo, you want to go to the playoffs? You're going to lose, but at least you're going to get there. Like, bro, and they're like, all right, we'll take that because we haven't been there. Cool. Like, only one team can win a championship. I can't just hold everybody. Two teams go, well, yeah, one team in your conference. One team can, I said one team can win and one team can go. He's not been to the finals, right? That's the one thing Russell Westbrook can say that he's done that. But how you that dude? Can... You that dude. You are literally top 15 all time, top 20 all time probably one of the top five point guards of all time. And you can't even get, you don't even not get there and lose, not be there at all. How many people who are six, four and below have led their teams to the finals? See, that's the, that's the, maybe like three or four, but that's the thing that I hold that against you. The fact that you only six foot tall or actually five eleven, six foot with shoes on. That's, a, that's something I hold against you. That's another reason I think Russell Westbrook is better. That's, that should be a point for Chris Paul. Chris Paul is not as physically gifted as Russell Westbrook or Darren Williams, right? And we saw that he's way better than Darren Williams. And I'm yeah. still, I'm holding against you forever. The fact that he used to argue me down about that. <laughs> Cause, man, he, Darren used to get my Lakers problems. And I swear I hated that. Darren dude. Williams was nice. He was very, very good. Not Chris Paul. Russell Westbrook. He's great. First ballot Hall of Famer. He's not Chris Paul. Chris Paul is probably going to go down. He's going to be in an argument for greatest player to not win a championship. You were saying the other day, you like, Chris Paul's never going to be remembered. It's over? It, the Suns, they have a chance this year, but it's going to be tough when LeBron and AD get back healthy. I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be tough, but they have a legit shot. But they got Chris Un- Paul. Unlike I mean, Russell Westbrook, even though he has Bradley Bill on his team in Washington. That's now, how Russell Westbrook get all this. Like, the Wizards <laughs> were trash before he got there. Now he there, and they like, you're not, you not the first seed? Oh, my God. Like, never said, we never said it was going to be the first seed. I predicted they would be like seven or eight. I thought they would at least make the playoffs. I was giving Russell Westbrook that. I was like, he's joining Bradley Bill. Did you see the clip I sent you? Did you see the clip? Bro, they was missing wide open layups off his dunk. This dude, if he was on a decent team, would be averaging 16 assists right now. Like in the last six games. That's a clip. There's also several clips of Russell Westbrook missing. You know who led the league in missed shots? Five out of the past six seasons? Russell Westbrook. That boy be taking them. He, you know who been on the trash team five of the last six years? Russell Westbrook. What you need him to do? You know who's never been in the top ten on that list? Chris Paul. Chris Paul don't shoot the ball like that. He can't get he can't get to the basket like Russell Westbrook. He can't if he's shooting it's a mid range or a three. That's it. Like he he knows I got to get his ball to somebody who could do something with first, it. And his first of all, in his prime, he can get to the rim. He's not dunking on you, but he can get to the rim. Great finisher at the rim. And the fact that he's shooting mid-range jumpers, right? He can't get to the rim now. Shoot mid-range jumpers and threes. And it's still way more efficient than the guy who gets to the rim whenever he wants to is more reason why let you further know why Chris Paul is better than Russell Westbrook. So, so I just got a question right now. I got a question for you right now. So right yeah. now, today, like not in a primes, nothing. Right now, today, who's the better player? Chris Paul. Today, like yes. old, hurt all the time and everything. He's that's the thing. He hasn't. He's been on that plant diet these past two years. He's been good, right? He playing fifteen play. minutes a game. Like wait, he better be good. Like he ain't out here playing thirty-seven minutes, thirty-eight minutes. He playing like he on restricted minutes. He hasn't been on restricted minutes either. 
Like he's not, been playing a lot of time this year. Nah, he he is definitely under thirty minutes a game. He's not, and under, that's not under thirty. That's not normal for Chris Paul. Yes, I promise you. He's not under thirty. Look that minutes. up, that boy. I'm telling you. Like hey, he play, out here like like on back to backs. He will play less minutes. Yes, right. But when it comes to Chris Paul, the reason Chris Paul is better is because he leads your team in a way where players are going to be better. Devin Booker is better because of Chris Paul right now. Devin Booker is great. Chris Paul makes him better. DeAndre Ayton, better. Miles, better. Like, the role players on the Suns right now would not be playing the way they are with Russell Westbrook at point guard. No way. I think that, I think, honestly, the team would be in the exact spot it is right now, just based off of what I seen last season. And I already thought they was coming up. Like, I I, I definitely thought they were going to make the playoff. You add, you add any player to that, I think they're going to do that. Chris Paul went to a team where he would help. It's the same thing as KD going to the Thunder. I mean, KD going to the Warriors. Like, yeah, you picked the team that was going to do that. No, KD going to the – the Warriors were in the finals and lost in game seven. No, I'm not saying it's on the same scale. I'm saying, like, when you <laughs> pick a team, you finna pick a team that you know, like, yo, I'm picking this team. This team is going to do this. Like, it wasn't like Westbrook was like a free agent and was like, yo, I'm going to this team, to, to any team I want. Because I honestly think if Russell Westbrook would have went with LeBron instead of KD, they would have a championship. Yeah, if, if Russell Westbrook's on LeBron's team, yes, LeBron gets Russell, Russell Westbrook a championship, yes. Instead like, of it's, KD, but it's but the narrative is Russell Westbrook was holding KD back, even though when Russell Westbrook got hurt and it was KD, could do nothing. His points went down, his turnovers went you up. Said, I thought of a narrative. Everything I gave you was not from Stephen A's narrative or – Colin no, I argue name. this all day. It's, like I'm, t- I argue this it's, every day. It's my viewpoint on Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul. Like I said, I enjoy Russell Westbrook. He gives you all the heart in the world, but and the that fact too. that he's the most athletic point guard of all time, and is not a great defender. He can't be better than. But Chris you make it sound like he's bad. Like he is not a bad defender at all. Like he, I, I mean, he's not great. Probably he because should he's be doing great so on much. defense. He should be great on defense. Not just average, not just okay. He should be great on defense. Kevin Durant stunted his growth. On defense? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> like, it's, what are you talking about? <laughs> Russell Westbrook should be an all-time great defender. Chris I, Paul, I actually agree. who you, you say is defense. short and chubby, is an all-time great defender. I mean, play, play passing lanes. He do what he got to do. No. He led the league. He out. led the league in steals like six times. He's ripping people and playing passing lanes and defending his position. I feel like you just talking about like this is what you did. Blocked out every other Chris Paul and only talk about Chris Paul and the Hornets when he was doing all this stuff. Like, no, Chris, the, he was great on the Clippers too, and on the Clippers he was pretty good too. And the Rock and the, the Rockets trade. This is the prime example of why Chris Paul is better. Chris Paul went to the Rockets. They were a championship contender. They traded Chris Paul for Russell Westbrook because James Harden and Chris Paul didn't get along, right? Russell Westbrook gets there, and they are no longer a championship contender. One one move. The rest of the roster is the same. You trade an old, aging point guard in Chris Paul, right, for a young, athletic, most athletic player of all time, point guard of all time, and Russell Westbrook, and you get worse. What like, what like- else do you say? that would have happened anyway first james harden was already on, on ready he was done he was ready to go no like, not this year i'm talking about no, last about, season he, he wasn't even last go. year i, I kind of i, I kind of feel like he was thinking moves like he, uh, like, he was thinking moves. i feel like he was thinking moves like he was no. thinking about what he was about to, what, what the next thing coming up he could do already feeling like that two dan tony eh, he was on his way out it was just it was just chris paul got this a knack for leaving Right before he get exposed, like, all right, well, I guess it's time for me to go. I can't, I can't be caught with y'all bums. I'm out. And then he just if he would have, if there's any time for Chris Paul to get exposed, it would have been last year joining the Oklahoma City Thunder with basically me and you on the squad, and he takes them to the first round of the playoffs where they lose to a more talented team. But Russell Westbrook did the same thing. That's what I'm trying to tell people. How do he get credit for it, but Russell Westbrook don't? I don't see he, where the gap gets, is. I'm like, yo, show me the credit. gap. He gets credit for that, but he's just not better than Chris Paul. And I, I when, when you said that he won't get remembered like that, I honestly do think more people will remember Westbrook than Chris Paul. No, because especially even because the negative stuff, 
you know what they say like any publicity is good publicity but whenever so they you, bring up best players to not win a championship chris paul will be mentioned if he don't win one this year he will be mentioned in that conversation and argued for in that conversation with charles barkley patrick ewan Allen iverson all those guys who came up short chris paul will be mentioned in that conversation as one of those best Russell Westbrook will as well, but he'll be behind Chris Paul in the conversation. Yeah, we'll see. He needs 18 triple doubles to break Oscar Robinson's record. So, you know, that, that'll be done in no time. And then we'll he'll, see where he he'll have we'll that see where he at right there. He'll have that. He'll get that. Definitely. He's a triple double monster. Right. But that's not everything. Again, when we look at the total player. Chris Paul's not going to get you triple doubles. He's not going to get you rebounds like that, right? Even though he, he rebounds well for his size, he still gets you five rebounds a game, right? And he's not chasing rebounds the way Russell Westbrook does. He's not chasing everything the way Russell Westbrook does. He's chasing defense. He's chasing, he's chasing defense, unlike Russell Westbrook does. Okay, Russell Westbrook <laughs> plays. Do you want me to make it? He plays defense. He just not. Like, he like, I got other stuff to do. Chris Paul ain't got other stuff to do? I mean, if I could dribble the ball up court and give it to somebody, yo, here you go. He so Chris Paul is just dribbling the ball up court and giving this to somebody. Chris Paul got some game where he got 10 points, 13 points. Like, yes, like if I, I mean, tell Westbrook, hey, calm down on offense, just score about 13, 14 points. I do the rest. I guarantee you, he could be like, all right, then cool. I focus all this rage and aggression I got on defense. But to just, it's the same thing they did with LeBron. I'm like, yo, y'all don't understand that this man is literally doing everything for our team. And I say our team because I'm on the Lakers in my heart. So our team is out here. That's the same thing they said about LeBron. It's the same thing I said about Westbrook. Like nobody, no human being is going to sit out here and be able to do everything. You're going to have to like pick and choose. So he he's good. He's not a liability. He's not Steph Curry out there, but he is good. Y'all just make it seem like he just out here just standing there like James Harden. He should be great on defense. Half a defense is being athletic enough to move your feet. If anybody's athletic enough to move their feet side to side and stay in front of somebody, it's Russell Westbrook. But who is the guy who is going to be remembered as one of the greatest defensive point guards of all time? It's the guy that you describe as short and chubby. Not the most athletic point guard of all time. I'm just using my eyes. I don't know. That's okay. You think he's short and chubby and he's a better defender than the most athletic point guard of all time. Why is that? Because the, the most athletic point guard of all time is running up and down the court, grabbing boards, pa- making great passes, dunking on people, doing everything for his if team. If he wasn't so busy was chasing rebounds and chasing triple doubles, he'll get more steals because he'll be in the passing lane at the right time. But this triple double about to give me 75% of my wins. This year? If, if you told this me year? right now this is getting- This year? No, no. Even this year, even this year, he got six. What? He got the last six or seven games, he got triple doubles. And the six that he got triple doubles, they four and two. That's the last six. What about this whole season? That's what he, but he don't, he didn't really start turn it on like that. There was a, a, a stretch in there where it, it was just like her, one of them, her trying their best to do what they could do. The, now, but once it turned on, the Wizards have like, gone okay. through a lot this year. I will give you that. The Wizards have been through a lot with COVID, injuries. What? You go, you gonna give Westbrook an excuse or something? That's crazy. Yeah, they've been through a lot this year, right? And it's just as crazy that when you look at the injury list, What's the team that's almost tied with them for injuries in different starting lineups? I mean, I know they my Lakers. Dang, we only got two. The Lakers, Lakers are up there, there, definitely. But the Suns are right there. And where are the Suns? Because Chris Paul's there. The number two seed in the Western Conference. <laughs> like this dude. Like, just, Devin how, Booker Kate. when I dropped that about the defensive side of the ball, and Chris Paul's also, throughout his career, giving you pretty much 20 points a game, 10 assists, and playing awesome defense. When somebody say pretty much 20 points, okay, you want to mean it's not 20 points. It's not. Okay. With the Hornets, you want to bring those years up. He's giving you more than 20 points. So let's do that then. Since you want to be specific <laughs> about it, he's giving you more than 20 points. More than 10 assists. See, that's and playing I great don't defense. think this, it's, it's a weird argument for because I don't think Chris Paul is trapped. Chris Paul is great to me. And even if I could just get people to bring Westbrook up to up here with Chris Paul. I'll He's not straight. up here with Chris Paul, though. I will be Chris straight. Paul is better. You you think okay, so, is better than Chris so, Paul? He's not. Let's just let's just let's just say this. Let's just say this. Well, at the end of the game, who's gonna make the right decision with the basketball? 
Who gonna get the basket? Not Russell Westbrook brick shooting ass. No, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no. See, that's the thing. People get people get turned up to talk about Russell Westbrook. Watch the comments. It's gonna be crazy how people talk about this dude, and that's what bothered me about this, which makes me go even harder for Westbrook. Yes, he's All a the polarizing stuff that you have to player. Go through. Chris Paul's also polarizing as well. They're both yeah. polarizing players, but for people me, people don't talk about Chris Paul one way or the other like that. That's the thing. People don't talk about that dude at all. Not good or bad. When the last time you seen Chris Paul on any sports talk, talk radio, talk TV show or anything? When's the last time? Like, you don't talk about Chris Paul like that because he, as good as he is, I'm not saying he's not good, but is he, people just, yeah, Chris Paul's good. And then we talk about LeBron or AD or Westbrook or somebody else. Yeah, Chris Paul. Oh, dude, great. Point God. Yeah, so what LeBron doing? What AD doing? What Russell Westbrook doing? That's it. That's why I say well, Russell don't be Westbrook saying what LeBron doing, what AD doing, what AD doing, what Westbrook doing. It don't go in that option. It, it I mean, it, it seems every day I watch it, it's like LeBron doing something great, it's AD been, doing something great. Westbrook, Russell Westbrook, Westbrook is trash. Because he's that conversation with you know Stephen A. But it's not like he's on that level where we talk about him like we talk about LeBron, like we talk about. We, KD. We do. It's just negative. Most of the time I get on there, I'm like, oh, or it's some amazing stat like 35, 20, and 20 or something crazy like that. It's, and then that's he gets brought up. It's like, like I said, triple doubles. That's what I'll give Westbrook. Over Chris Paul, he's a much better rebounder. Right? But it's not like he's a power forward or a center. That's not what makes his impact on the team. Those rebounds could easily go to when it was Steven Adams. Steven Adams is blocking out while Westbrook comes in and skies for the rebound. Or whoever it is down there playing down low could easily get those rebounds. That doesn't impact the team at all. Okay, well, I'm going to say the same thing Bradley Bill said about those rebounds. Yo, when Westbrook gets the rebounds, I love it because we push. We go instantly up the court. So it's not the same thing, and it does have an impact more than if Steven Adams got it, who I love. I love me some Steven Adams. I'm a dude. Boy, it looks like Aquaman. But – Stupid. Like it's not it's not the same. You gotta accept yes, the fact can, that you can push the ball and he pushes it right into what? A turnover. Oh my accurate. god. <laughs> he's <laughs> pushing the ball and everything is happening. That's awesome. He's pushing the ball and I've seen it. I've seen him get a rebound, go a million miles per hour, jump up in the air, not know what to do, turnover. You know I who's not that. doing that? Chris Paul. Chris Paul has never got a rebound and had a tur- first of all, Chris Paul has never got a rebound. I can end that sentence right there and it'll be true. But I just said he averaged five rebounds a game, but okay. I, I, oh, no, no, no. He's He can give you five rebounds on a good night. Like, <laughs> he, he can give you five on a good night. If he gets five, I'm like, oh, he had a great yes. rebound Chris Paul has gotten turnovers before. Everybody has. Exactly. But Chris Paul might have two, maybe three turnovers a game. The highest of his career was three turnovers, and that was early in his career. Russell Westbrook is a vet in the game right now, giving you five-plus turnovers a game. That's what happens when you, I'm saying you got, if you put him in a, in a, the thing I hate about Russell Westbrook or what happened with Russell Westbrook is I, I honestly feel this way. If giving him a coach who could help him channel all this power and potential that this dude got, this dude is amazing, but he never had someone spearheaded in the right spot or give him a team like with, with lead, like LeBron or somebody like that with that direction, this dude would be way better. So he gets this narrative that he's taking shots from KD when KD don't even seem like he want to shoot the ball like that. Like, so KD to go with Kyrie Irving and Kyrie Irving shooting the ball more than him. The same way Westbrook was shooting the ball more than him. But nobody says, oh, Kyrie taking shots from KD. No, it's just the way KD play. KD don't want that. KD never did want that. It has nothing to do with Russell Westbrook. But he gets- Like I said, you, you tried to paint me into that corner with everybody else earlier. I'm not that dude. I never said- Westbrook held KD back. I've never I said like that. It. You said what? I feel like you thought it. Wow. You're reading thoughts now. Look. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never said that, right? And I've never been on that same narrative as everybody else. I understand Westbrook has had some bad luck, some bad teams, right? He's had some teams where he didn't have the most talent around him. And you say he didn't take those bad teams as far as they could go? Yeah, it definitely a couple of them went as far as they could go. There's others when you have an all-star with you like Paul George, when you lose to a Utah team with Donovan Mitchell, who's super young in the game, don't know what he's doing in the playoffs yet. So you're going to say the same thing about Kawhi? Because Kawhi had Paul George, and you know what that team did? 
But Danny Granger have Paul George as MVPs. Like you have to bring that into the conversation. Now, the, who's the the one calling out Kawhi and calling out Paul George after that happened? I was the one on my podcast saying I named it "Choking on Chicken." That was the name of the episode. So if you want to talk about who called out Kawhi after that happened, I said I was ashamed. I have a pair of Kawhi shoes that I play basketball in. I said I was ashamed to wear the shoes because I was scared I might choke in them. That's how I called out Kawhi. So don't, so don't say I didn't call out Kawhi. No, but see, are we going to blame Kawhi and then uh, Russell Westbrook and everybody? No, it's it's the common denominator, Paul George. Paul George, but Kawhi also didn't show up in game seven, so I had to talk about Kawhi as well. Russell Westbrook in that series, especially against Dane, got severely outplayed by Dame Dollar. Talked all that trash about Dame. Rocking a baby, Dame can't stay with him. Dame's not as athletic as Russell Westbrook. But for some reason, Dame was able to do his thing against Russell Westbrook. For one, for some reason in one series, God was with him. I will give him that. Like he really was, that's you know wrong. Dame is nice in the playoffs. Stop. No, Dame is Dame is Dame is Dame. That's my dude. I'm I'm not saying <laughs> nothing to get him, but I'm saying like that series was just magical for this dude. I, they made it all the way to the, the Western Conference Finals that year. I'm like, okay. And I thought they was about to win that one until Chef Curry did what Chef Curry do. Yeah, no. Other than that, like he ain't got no excuse for that, by the way. Dame got no excuse for that. But no, he's Steph Curry's better than Dane. I'll give you that. When he talks about that series, the Warriors are also better than the Trailblazers. No, not not that year. They when, when KD was gone and it was just come on, like this was they was blood in the water. But they still had Clay at that time. So you got Steph and Clay and Draymond, defensive player of the year. CJ Draymond. McCullum? CJ McCollum is nice. Okay, they so think he Clay had Thompson, too. Clay Thompson's a lockdown defender and the second greatest shooter of all time. Yeah, but okay, we can sidetrack. I know th- he literally told me this like right before. <laughs> Bro, don't do that thing where you bring up Freddie. <laughs> we over here talking about CJ McCullough. But when it comes to Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul, when Chris Paul is your best player, you have a better chance of winning than when Russell Westbrook is your best player. And when I Russell Westbrook is, is your best player, you can make it to the finals. Unlike with Chris Paul, who has never Wait, done Wait, Russell it. Westbrook was the best player on that finals team? I mean, in that final series he was because KD was not balling like he should have been. KD, KD balled out. Now, the player who didn't show up in those finals was James Harden. James, James Harden. Harden was nowhere James to Harden be found. Like, he was nowhere to be found in those finals. KD played, and KD also had to stick prime LeBron and be guarded by prime LeBron. But So let's not act like that didn't happen. You know who was the Miami's point guard guarding Russell Westbrook? Because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't have nobody at that position at the time to guard Russell Westbrook. So, of course, he was going to go crazy. See, that's the, that's the thing. Every time Russell Westbrook do anything, it's a reason for is that. that. But no, is that not true, though? Do you remember, honestly, do you remember who Miami's point guard was that year? No, I don't. That's the year before Mario Chalmers got there. Exactly. So, of that's course, a- he's going to go crazy in those finals. He still did it. Like, he showed up. James he Harden. He showed up. He showed up in those finals. He made it to the finals. James Harden was scared of Dwayne Wade. He didn't want no problems. Who wasn't James- scared? Kendrick Perkins, who was on that team, said James Harden was partying too much on <laughs> On South Beach. <laughs> but James Harden known for this, though, so I don't even think it's that because he be, he got some nine-point games. A dude who averaged 33 will go right out there and get scored nine points in a playoff game. So James just Harden is the one who doesn't have any excuses for some of his playoff performances. True. And they were still in the finals. Baby Westbrook got start. If you were starting point guard on the team in the finals and you were actually, like, contributing, that's pluses. You got to get something for that. They can't be like, it didn't mean nothing, though. No. I never said it didn't mean anything. You like holding Katie back. That's a great accomplishment. Making it to the finals is a great accomplishment. That doesn't make him better than Chris Paul. If you put Chris Paul in that same position, they still make the finals. But you but you talking to a dude who thinks Peyton Manning is better than Tom Brady. I I'm not a like a, a winning a total winning thing, but stats do matter. Yes. Like winning in basketball matters more than winning in football, right? Because football is an ultimate team sport. So many things could go wrong. That's mm-hmm. not your fault in football. Basketball, you have more control, especially if you're the star player, right? So I'm with you. I think Peyton Manning's better than Tom Brady, too, and people go crazy. But whose career is better? Out of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning? Mm -hmm. You would go Tom Brady because he... Exactly. So why are we not going Russell Westbrook here? Because basketball, again, is different. Then then you're talking about Tom Brady, who got seven rings. You're talking about one finals appearance. It's one to zero. It's one one to zero. That's you can't. That's not enough. Like with Tom Brady having seven rings 
that's different than Peyton Manning having two, and then Peyton Manning got car- literally carried to the second one because he was no he no longer throw the ball. Oh, whoa, whoa, nope, we doing it. How did he, how are you gonna call that carry? But you're not gonna call Tom Brady carry this one and the time when they went to the finals with the Eagles. Wait, and well, the time who, when they beat the Rams. Come out. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Did I not call out Tom Brady for having all these defenses all these years? You be forgetting my Put stances it. on stuff. Yeah, but he had great defense. That's not enough. He was carried to four Super Bowls. Carry, literally carried like, yo, I'm going to throw three interceptions, but we still finna win this game. Yeah, exactly. Four times in four different playoff series. Yes, yes. Now, so Peyton he, wasn't yes, carried. Definitely, definitely. Like when people talk about the game against the Saints, the Bucks defense played amazing in that game. Drew Brees threw three interceptions. Jared Cook had the worst fumble of all time in that game and people were like tom brady got past the saints and i was like did y'all watch the game like it was their defense that played amazing so yes so i'm you with you on that, that. It, it's but the same football, thing if you look at it with with the chiefs same thing destroyed the chiefs patrick mahomes looked trash you know who didn't look trash aaron Rodgers. <laughs> aaron yeah. Rodgers still looked great they just beat him like okay cool. yeah i'm with you i'm with you like you talked about the episode i had ashley baker on and i was the one making the argument that tom brady isn't the GOAT. Like, you forget so fast what my stances are on things and try to no, fit no, me I in. No, I know we think the same about else. that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to show you the, the correlation between Westbrook's career and uh, CP3's career. So that's my example. Like That's, that's think, a bad example. We know. Brady has seven rings. Like, you can't... That one, Tom Brady is an exception to every rule. Like, his luck of having top 10 defenses mm-hmm. for most of his career is against the norm. You can't compare that to Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. No, I'm saying like one, you'll be like, okay, skill wise, I would pick Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is clearly better than than Tom Brady. To me, it's not even close. Like, I don't think it's a coincidence that in high school you were decent, in college you were decent, and you barely get drafted to the NFL, and then some stuff happened and some luck goes your way, and you win a bunch of these things on some great teams. I don't think it's coincidence. I think if you're great, you're always great. Like Patrick Mahomes was picked in the first round for a reason. Aaron Rodgers was picked in the first round for a reason. Like you don't have Peyton Manning was picked first. Peyton Manning was great in high school, great in college. Great in the NFL. There, That's why he's the there's some, exceptions. There's like some exceptions to that rule, though. You think about somebody like Russell Wilson. He was great in high school, great in college. For some reason, slipped in the draft because he was too short, slipped in the draft to the third round, and became great in the pros. But he so, didn't slip to the seventh. No, no, he didn't slip. But there's also other positions where players have slipped down, like Terrell Davis is an example. I think he was a fifth or sixth round pick and became a great running back. Like, there's other positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Quarterback, yeah. it doesn't normally happen like that. That's like I said, you know, Tom Brady is some people get mad when I say he's the luckiest player of all time. He's great. Like he's definitely great. He's top five all time. He's great, but he's had some of the best luck of all time. And even in the games that he did win the Super Bowl, lucky stuff happened against him. Like luck is always in the area. Like Eli Manning had some of the greatest mm-hmm. luck of all time against him. Like there's always luck evolved in the game somehow. But back to basketball, Why back to our original the debate. Hall of Famer. You said what? If I hear Chambers say this dude is a Hall of Famer one more time, I'm flying <laughs> yeah. out. Like Giants fans, <laughs> Giants fans are when it comes to Eli, you can't discuss it with him. Like I had, Hello, I put nothing, a, I put an old take up. I put an old quote up from like an episode I did like last year or year before last about Eli and when I call him the best average quarterback of all time, which I've been saying for years. And all the Giants fans, he. They even try to say he's better than Breeze. And I was like, really? He's better than Drew Breeze? <laughs> so, because like, he got more rings, right? Like, like the Minnesota Miracle was Drew Breeze's fault. He was the one out there playing safety who missed that horrible tackle. The no call. That's no- what I hate. The people who go off the rings. Like, yeah. the rings are what tells you if somebody's better or not. The same people who are saying Eli Manning is great, deserves being a Hall of Fame, are saying Russell Westbrook is trash and Chris Paul is way better than him. Okay, well, Russell <laughs> Westbrook has been to the finals and Chris Paul have not. So what are we talking about? Russell Westbrook has an MVP. Chris Paul do not. Like, well, Chris what Paul are we talking did, about? Chris Paul should have gotten an MVP in 2008 when they gave it to Kobe for a lifetime achievement award. But that's another argument for another day. Yes, I said it. Kobe. I said it. Laker fans right here. First of all, <laughs> bro, you about to get so much hate right now. All, before Kobe passed, you wasn't the biggest Kobe fan. Let's be honest. Were you the biggest Kobe fan? Last right now. <laughs> you, <laughs> you wasn't the biggest Kobe fan. Now you're a Lakers. I had to go back and watch highlights of my Kobe, boy. But you 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 have respect for Kobe, but you wasn't the biggest Kobe fan because Kobe, at times, especially later on in his career, 
would have these Westbrook tendencies that for some reason you're excusing Westbrook. So when Kobe was late in his career, he would have these inefficient nights, shooting all these shots, missing all these shots. Westbrook does the same thing, but it's thought of as him being heroic, him being the guy to carry the squad when he goes 10 for 30. And people who love Kobe I love that about backwards. Kobe. Yeah, that they, when Kobe does it, it's like, well, we love this. And I'm just saying, be consistent. However you feel about one, feel about both of them. If you feel Kobe's great for his 10 for 30s, 30 nights, then feel like Westbrook is doing the same thing. That's all I'm saying. But no, for some reason, this narrative about Westbrook being I'm trash, consistent. I'm consistent. I respect Kobe. Kobe was one of the greatest of all time, second best shooting guard of all time. I've always said that. And, you know, the fact that when he passed, it was horrible. I even cried. It hit me harder than I thought it would when Kobe passed. And but I still have to stay to my original point about Kobe letting his career being inefficient, just like Russell Westbrook was or is now and throughout his whole career. When you look at the shooting percentages from Chris Paul to Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul is better. Assist to turnover ratio, Chris Paul is better. Russell Westbrook just puts up raw stats. But when you go behind the curtain on those raw stats, Chris Paul is better across the board. Across the board and everything when you go through shooting percentage, analytics on what a team does when he's on the floor, plus, minus, all those things, Chris Paul is better. Agree or disagree? <laughs> on that note, we'll end, <laughs> I would, I we'll end this debate. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll end this debate now. Please let us know in the comment section below. Who do you think is better, Chris Paul or Russell Westbrook? You can even comment on the things that we did a little side tangents on. We weren't supposed to, but that's on me. I'm supposed to control the show. Hey, we both about to get hate. We both about to get hate for that Tom Brady take. (laughs) Yes, we both going to get hate. We're going to get hate on the Eli take. But this has been the real deal debate. Um, Hopefully next time I can keep it shorter. That was my my goal to keep it short. I don't know how long (laughs) we've been talking. (laughs) But it's also going to be up on the podcast feed as well on the real deal of Damian Adams if you just want to listen to this great debate. And I'll be doing this every week, man. We're going to try to come up with different subjects to debate. Anybody want to debate the Eli debate? We could do it. You want to come on? We could do the Eli hey, debate. <laughs> Jay, get on here and debate that, please, because I, <laughs> your reason is just hilarious to me. All right. So until next time, go real or go home.